Oh hey there friends, welcome back to the channel. My name's Alex Lokes and winter is finally here in Ontario in a major way. And I love this time of year. It challenges me as a photographer and really makes me think and to go with stuff that I know. So films like Tri-X, HP5, FP4, and cameras I know well. So today I'm actually have my Roloflex 2.8F with me and I'm going to be shooting FP4. But when it really comes to going back to basics, it also can be a developer and you don't get much more basic than Kodak D23. And the best part about D23 is even though you can't buy it from Kodak new, you can make it yourself and it's quite simple. So let's head to my kitchen and I'll show you the ingredients you need, the tools you need and mixing instructions. And then we'll come back here. So one of the best parts about working with Kodak D23 is how easy it is to make at home. And the chemistry is readily available through photographer's formulary or a reseller. For example, I get a lot of my stuff through Jacques at argentex.ca. And before I get to the equipment I'm using, just want to let you know that if you check in the links in the description below, you'll find a link to all the equipment that I'm going to be using today. And these are not affiliate links. I make no money off of anything you click. So feel free to purchase and use whatever you see fit. So let's come around here and I can show you my setup. Now this is not a normal setup for mixing your own chemistry at home. It's a bit advanced. I've added a few things that just make my life easier, but there are a few items that are an absolute must. First of all, you are going to need something that holds at least one liter of chemistry. So I have this lovely glass beaker here and it is sitting on what's known as a magnetic stirrer. Now this will help mix the chemistry together, but you can use a neutral material like a glass rod to handle this for you. The one thing you will need is a darkroom thermometer and that is right here and it is in another graduated cylinder and that's what I can use to actually start pouring the water into the beaker to start actually making the chemistry. And if you actually have a magnetic stirrer that has a heating element to it, you can forego the thermometer, but it's just a good idea to make sure you're at temperature. One thing that is a must is a diet scale and or a scale that can do down to a tenth of a gram. And then you're going to need the actual chemical itself. You're going to need the metal and you're going to need sodium sulfate, specifically anhydrous sodium sulfate. And that is very important to get the right stuff because I made it with the wrong stuff and it did not work well. All right, so that's everything you need to get started. Let's get actually putting these things together. Okay, so the first thing you're going to need to do is to get 750 milliliters of water and you're going to want that heated up to 125 degrees Fahrenheit or 52 degrees Celsius. So again, if you're in a situation like me and actually have access to really good tap water, you can do that. If not, you'll want to heat up some distilled water to that temperature. And if you don't have that heating element on your magnetic stirrer, you can use a sous vide cooker to heat up that water for you. And then into that, you're going to mix seven and a half grams of metal. Perfect. And then you put that in and then you start the stir. and you just ramp it up nice and slow. OK, 
Okay, and the next step, you want 100 grams of your anhydrous sodium sulfate. Okay, let's mix that in and you can see this in action. Okay, once that is done, simple plain uh, brown bottle for storage, and then I use a funnel and a fine mesh strainer. And it's just that simple. Now, I'm going to stick this in a snowbank, let it cool down a bit, truly a Canadian way. We'll head back to the woods and actually get shooting and talking about this beautiful developer. Because it has one developing agent, Kodak D23 is both low contrast and slow working. Because of this, it also is a compensating developer, and is a favorite of noted landscape photographer Ansel Adams, and those who use the zone system or the precision metering method. It's also great for middling out high contrast scenes and films. But like any developer, it's good for far more than just those. Being a non-solvent developer, it will not cut down any grain, but it also won't reduce edge sharpness either. So working with a slower film is probably the best bet for D23. And you'll find with faster films, you'll get a bit of a speed loss. But don't worry about that, because it will certainly improve the image quality in many cases. So where does D23 shine? With the classics, of course. It makes all three flavors of Foma Pan shine from 100 to 400 and can even make 200 sing. You'll have to shoot your Foma Pan 400 at ASA 250, but count that as a good thing. And your Foma Pan 200, well, you can shoot it at box speed, cutting it back a stop to ASA 100 and then pulling and developing will certainly help also. It also works wonders with Ilford FP4, Kodak Tri-X, and does an excellent job with T-Max 100 and Fuji Acros 100 too. But if you have older film stocks like F-Key, Panatomic X, Veracrome Pan, or Plus X, they all work wonderfully with D-Step 23. And even if you don't have the listed times for D23 available, simply take the D76 times, increase by 10%, and you're golden. As an example, if you have a film that has a time for seven minutes, in stock D76, develop it for 7 minutes and 45 seconds in stock D23. A 1 liter bottle of solution, well stored in a cool dark place, will develop 10 rolls of film and last about 3 months. Alternatively, you can mix up your own replenisher, DK25R, that's basically D23 with sodium metasorbate added. After And after each roll, remove 23 milliliters of your stock solution and add the same amount of DK25R. Personally, D23 is the developer I go for when I want to achieve a far more classic, low contrast work for my images, especially when photographing historical reenactments. One downside to uh, shooting in the winter 
is getting snow in your waist level finder. Whew. But you get to see some beautiful snowflakes under the magnifying glass. As you can see, making your own developer is simple. And the best part is, is that this stuff is readily available. You can buy it from Photographer's Formulary, Bostick and Sullivan, or your local chemical supplier. I'll have links in the description below where I get my chemicals. And let me know in the comments, what developers have you made? Have you done D23? Have you even updated and made D76 or D96 from scratch? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, get out there, stay safe, get back to basics. It's the best thing you can do for yourself.